Welcome back to HRNHQ for a discussion on a trio of derby races, one at Belmont, two in the Midwest, and we're going to save the best for first. And Sarah, not because it's the grade one race, but because it has the best horse, Tis the Bomb returns in the Belmont Derby. I'm excited, and I'm even more excited that I've handicapped the race, and I like them. I am shocked that you're not wearing your Tis the Bomb button from the Kentucky <laughs> Derby. In addition to your polo shirt, you're not supporting him enough, or we're just going to talk about it? I'm supporting him with my dollars. There you go. Well, it seems as though this is the right move for him, getting back to the turf where he has had the most success, being that he won the Breeders' Cup <laughs> Juvenile Turf. Obviously, Modern Games, the winner, but paramutually, yes. Tis the Bomb. Trophy to modern games, though. But wagering dollars. Yes. Yes. Unfortunately for many. And unfortunately for me, <laughs> I actually remembered that Albar, the one that started the entire commotion in the starting gate and was scratched, leading to the scratch of modern games and then having him come back in running for purse money only. He actually ran today at Newmarket and oh. I, yeah, last. Oh. Yeah. Having, a, having an effect. Well, yeah. I don't expect his the bomb to be last. That would be very embarrassing for me. Back-to-back -back derbies. Kentucky Derby, obviously a draw a line through it race. He ran evenly. I don't think it was a complete clunker. Obviously, was never a threat to have any sort of impact on the finish, though. Back to turf. The numbers on synthetic are absolutely good enough to beat the rest of these. He will have to get back to those numbers, which we did not see him run at two, but you wouldn't have expected that at two. A little bit of a gamble. In my mind, Sarah, this is the time to get the price I would want on him because if he wins, he'll be favored wherever he goes next. Now we're looking at five, six, seven, maybe eight to one with the Euros. That's good enough for me. And with the morning line showing that this race is completely wide open. Which it is. Which it absolutely is. Do you feel as though you should be getting a little bit better of a price on him, or you still feel as though that that's fair enough considering the rest of the competition, even with the five euros included? Well, you know me, I'm very black and white. So if I think he has a 20% chance to win, anything above four to one is value. So that's kind of how I think of it. I would say five to one, I would really start getting a bad taste in my mouth. I'm not sure I really want to take less than a $12 horse in this spot. Uh, currently, he's 8-1 to one with an Australian bookmaker that I have made available some wagering dollars uh, to back at that price. Not a ton because I'm a little nervous he might actually be that in the gate. But if he's 6-1, to one, then at least I'll have a better price already. Uh, the Aiden O'Brien looks tough. The Appleby, obviously, two trainers who have come over here and won. Appleby, in particular, for Godolphin, was on fire last year. Right, absolutely. But the, does the post draw kind of concern you a little bit with some of these euros yeah. drawing ten and thirteen, or are you not? Mile and a quarter. Not worried well, about not, it. I'm not worried about it. All right. Well, are you? No. Oh, okay. But I also we saw him come over with the Santa Barbara last year. Probably one of the best turf fillies that we've ever seen. Yeah. Unfortunately, a traumatic end to that story. But these aren't euros that wow me. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's why they're here. I mean, they have their big races over there to run in. So right. who's your pick? Well, this is a spread race for me, but I have to kind of give the horses some credit that are coming out of the Penine Ridge that we're able to close up some ground into that very sluggish, snail-like pace set by Emmanuel, who was trying turf for the first time for Todd Fletcher. Saw Napoleonic War and limited liability come from the back of the pack and make up some ground late. The... Final quarter time for those two had to be so much faster to be able to close into that slow pace. And I think that Napoleonic War should handle the stretch out in here. The female side of the family actually relates him to Zenyatta. So mile and a quarter shouldn't be a problem. And it's Chad Brown and Flavio Pratt at 10 to 1. So It's a good price and some good connections. Well, you mentioned it being a spread race. It is part, obviously, of a pick five at Belmont, but also the cross-country pick five, which includes also the Belmont Oaks. And in Indiana, back home in Indiana, the Indiana Derby, Indiana Oaks, and one of the undercard stakes races on turf. We're going to look at the Indiana Derby, stay with the three-year-olds. Brad Cox is deadly shipping into stakes at Horseshoe Indianapolis. He has Interstate Daydream in the Oaks, who I think is the most likely winner on the day. 
And I'm very pleased that Rattle and Roll is committed to the Indiana Derby because I think that will allow us to get the right price on Best Actor. Wow. All right. Well, I know there was some confusion with which race he would actually end up in, either that or the Iowa Derby, which we'll talk about in a moment. There's another horse that's cross-entered as well, and that's Actuator. Do you know where he's going? I do. Where is it? Indiana. Indiana. Okay. So they're both committing to <laughs> They are. They're taking, they're taking on Brad. Wow, which makes the Iowa Derby seem a little more narrow, at least to me. But yes. sticking with the race that we're talking <laughs> about right now, Rattle and Roll, I've never been his biggest fan, but this is a pretty easy spot for him. Whose um, horse would you say you're their biggest fan? You know what I'm going to say. No. <laughs> you just want him to pull it. Oh, my one-eyed guy, Unoho, comes back in here. He has another musical trainer chain now in the Diodoro barn. But obviously, you have to look at the race as a whole, and I don't know if it sets up for him. Mm. I know you don't like him anyway, but yeah. I don't think it sets up for his running style. I like that he's drawn outside. He gets away from that rail issue that he had last time out in the Arkansas Derby where he did end up hitting the rail, and that's kind of the reason, at least to me, for the very poor performance after he was close up early on in there. I didn't see the Rebel as much of a fluke as everybody else did when he <laughs> shocked at that huge price. I thought that he was running well enough on the New York circuit prior to that interesting barn change here you know how Diodoro is first time in his barn but again I just don't know if pace dynamics this is his best opportunity to get back to the winner's circle yeah I'm wondering uh, maybe next time's a time if they find uh, more pace uh, and there are horses in here that like to be on the front end they're just none of them are particularly super fast so that I mean I don't know who's burning each other out I do like best actor did a video with Brian that looked at all of these stakes races in the pick five specifically at Horseshoe Indianapolis best actor was my single along with the aforementioned other Cox and the Oak so I'm willing to lean on uh, Brad we trust so to speak rattle and roll the week layoff obviously is going to be a big talking point coming into this and if rattle and roll had the sneaky look of like eight or 10 to one and people, oh, I don't really want to bet a horse a week back. I'd be super interested. It doesn't bother me at all. But the, you know, the fact that this horse is going to be among the top three choices with uh, actu actuator. I think. Yeah. And ra and uh, best actor has me wanting to just lean in one direction. And that is best actor. I do think, to segue now to Altoona, Iowa, and the Iowa Derby, I do think Rattle and Roll and Actuator are making the right decision because Conagher, even though he has the distance question to answer, is just so much faster than the rest of these on paper. I don't blame him for looking elsewhere. And now with those two out, he is absolutely the horse to beat in here. He's by Jimmy Creed, maybe eight and a half is his limit. I just don't see who else can run with him. You didn't give any look at all to Major General? No. No? Well, I mean, it's it's one of those two. It's clearly not anybody else. This is a It's one field. of one for me. I Conger guess Major General's the favorite. Yes. So this is the opportunity, maybe. The distance is the question for this guy, but obviously, as you said, he's extremely fast. He's working bullets coming into this. Those figures, though, in the last two, they have the look of being inflated, especially the last one with the triple-digit buyer speed figure. So I'm not that, looking at buyers. I know you're not. But as someone that does, when I see a figure that is so outside the norm and there's a little bit of a reason as, why that, as to why that might be, I want to see it again. Just like we the people in the Peter Pan. Sure. We certainly did not see it again in the Belmont States. Yeah, but the Iowa Derby is a lot different than the Belmont. Right. However, with no, Major... No skippy long stockings in here. No. With Major General, at least you have Todd Fletcher, Javier Castellano going out to Iowa. These are connections that everybody's familiar with, and of course this horse is going to take money, but at least with him, I feel as though he's had some dirtied up form a little bit. The turf failed experiment last time, and it was also a Churchill Downs. And I I don't know. At the Pate Mile, and he had a bad break. <laughs> Second in the Lexington, I feel as that was a decent race for him when he was coming back off of the layoff. So I get if you don't want to take him as a short price, but I, I worry about the distance a little bit for Conagher, although sure. I do agree that he is the horse to beat. Well, I'd love for Major General to be the favorite because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to trust the speed number I looked at that he's just that much faster. He'll need to do it eight and a half furlongs, but uh, it'll be hopefully a good end to, I'm going to say long day because that makes it sound like it's hard, but... There's a lot going on Saturday. And we'll be at Horseshoe Indianapolis. We'll be live. Uh, a lot You'll of be live. I'll be having fun. 
yes, I'll be working, uh, working the paddock scene in winter circle, but all right. Belmont Derby, tis the bomb for me. Napoleonic War on top, but any sort of multi I play, whether it's the cross country pick five or the late pick five at Belmont Park, that's a huge spread raise for me. I would go, let's see, three, seven, eight, nine, ten, thirteen. Wow, nine over ten for me. Tis the bomb's the A, and who's the ten? Nation's Pride. Okay, I keep wanting to say Stone Age, and I know that's the other one. The Nation's Pride, nine, ten for me. Best actor for me in the Indiana Derby. I mean, I, I, it would also be a spread. I don't trust best, best actor enough, although I understand that Cox is obviously very dangerous with these two, but I know that you're singling. So. Yeah, on the main ticket. I mean, you know, I like to, to mix things up. I, I back do up. know. Uh, well, it sounds like we're going to have to tell people to like and subscribe and follow you on Twitter because you can update with your picks throughout the day because if you're spreading in these two, you're going to be need to be narrow somewhere else. Absolutely, and I will put up picks for Horseshoe Indianapolis on Saturday in addition to the usual Belmont, and then we'll just say with the Iowa Derby. Paddock Prince style. Uh, He's doing both. He is. Yeah. But for a price. Wow. He's the prince. <laughs> he is. Got to pay tribute. Got to make his own <laughs> rules. But for the Iowa Derby, it'd be 3-5 for me. 3-5 so. for you? I mean, who uh, else is in there? Only, yeah. yeah. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> and I haven't looked at the other races at Iowa. I mean, I'd love to find some 20 to one horse because then I can use both and not worry about it. But my thought is these stakes races out of town usually get pretty chalky. Right. So I'm willing to lean on Conagher. So I'm pretty thin. If there were a pick three here, I'd just be looking to hammer it. Hammer? Hammer time. <laughs> yep. All right. Like subscribe Saratoga next week. Are you excited? I'm excited. Colonial. Colonial. Del Mar. And no, Del Mar is the week after. Yeah. No, nobody's paying attention anyway. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> I, the, I, there's one or two years where like Del Mar opened and then Saratoga. I think Del Mar's doing the right move. Let Saratoga Waiting. have its week. Mm -hmm. and Well, Trevor Denman's going to be back, right? Yeah. That's exciting news. They'll have to sprout wings. I miss his voice. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I'm Team Dooley. Apples to oranges, yes. I mean. They have the same last initial. What else do they have in common? I think that's about it. <laughs> Might be about it. And I guess that's it for us. I guess so. All right. Like, subscribe. Next week, Saratoga. Wall-to-wall -wall coverage. Lots of other good stuff. Follow her on Twitter for all the other picks of the races we didn't cover. Good luck. <laughs>